That's right, cold, hard cash. Especially cold and hard, since the Romans only used coins. Yeah, and you think having excess change is annoying nowadays. Anyways, in researching for this video, I essentially wanted to answer three questions. One, how are Roman coins made? Two, what are these coins worth? And three, who's on them? And just for fun, I thought it might be a good idea to count off some of the richest Romans. So, without further ado... One of the most mind-boggling things about Roman currency is the sheer amount of coins they manufactured. 17 million denarii were being minted each year in the 2nd century CE. Keep in mind, all these coins were made without modern technology. Every coin minted has to be smithed by hand. So, I bet you're wondering how they did it. Well, basically, a Roman coinsmith, which was usually a slave or a servant or something, would pour molten metal into a mold, called a die, featuring the imprint of the desired coin. Then, the minter would apply pressure, and voila, a coin. But, you see, from here, it starts to get more complicated. The dies with the engravings on them were all uniform, to the point where they could not be reasonably replicated to that exact specificity. So that implies the existence of a mold for a die, which is essentially like Inception, but instead of a dream within a dream, it's a mold within a mold. There is nothing quite as wonderful as money. There is nothing quite as beautiful as cash. So, now that we know the quantity of coins being produced, what can I buy with it? First, the materials. Roman coins were minted out of bronze, silver, gold, and orichalcum, which I always thought was just an ore from Terraria, but you learn something new every day, right? Anyways, the kinds of Roman coins being minted changed from century to century. I'll rattle off the basic exchange rates up until about the 3rd century, because inflation gets a little crazy during the 3rd century. The basic exchange rates are as follows. 25 aurei equals 1 denarius. 1 sesterce equals 4 denaries. 1 dupontis equals 5 denarii. 1 as equals 10 denarii. 1 semis equals 20 denarii. 1 quinconex equals 24 denarii, 1 triens equals 30 denarii, 1 quadrens equals 40 denarii, and finally 1 uncia equals 120 denarii. There you have it. Now, as for what, say, a denarius or aureus would equal in our modern currency is, well, a little complicated. You see, since the Roman coinage is based on the gold and silver standard and was developed in a completely different context than our paper money, it can get really messy to try and convert between the two. Also, considering the fact that prices rapidly fluctuated in the over thousand year old empire, it can be hard to pinpoint an exact amount during a specific period. In researching for this video, I've read claims that a single denarius can cost from $2 to $3 to $20 and all the way up to $90. And coincidentally, all sources listed these prices without a specific time period. So there you have it. Unfortunately, the answer to the question, how much is a denarii worth, is anywhere from 10 cents to a hundred dollars. Now, finally, we get to the real bread and butter of this video. I get to show you all some of my favorite coins from the Roman Empire. The designs on Roman coins could be astoundingly complex, and some of the stories about them are equally as interesting. First, here's a coin of Romulus and Remus, depicting the supposed mythical instance of them being raised by a she-wolf. It's a great coin, and a great showcase of that detailed engraving I was talking about. Here's another coin depicting a set of mythical twins, this time it's Castor and Pollux. This coin is really interesting. Besides the obvious semi-frightening dual heads, it also shows an eagle swooping down and attacking a dolphin. Next, how about an actual real-life figure, Sala? There's not too much special about this coin, I just think it's cool. And, expectedly, here's a coin of Julius Caesar. But there's something special about this coin. It was minted while Caesar was still alive. Up to this point, all of their coins were either depicting figures either dead or mythological. And Caesar commissioning this coin was a huge leap in the Roman social dynamic, and would become a standard practice for the future emperors of Rome. Speaking of emperor coins, here's a coin of Trajan with a camel on the back of it? That's an interesting choice. 
And while we're on the subject of camels, this coin of Antoninus Pius shows not a Roman god, but an Egyptian one. The back of this coin depicts the Egyptian deity Isis. Pretty cool. And to finish up, here's my favorite coin. This coin was minted shortly after Caesar's assassination. Depicted on the face is Marcus Junius Brutus. Yes, THE Brutus, ringleader of the plot to kill Caesar. And the reverse depicts the Liberty Cap, which is a hat that slaves receive after being freed. The cap is surrounded on either side by two daggers. Hopefully, the message here is obvious. There's Romans think they're minted, but they ain't rich like me. You can't call yourself loaded till you can buy an army. Ran Rome with Pompey and Caesar, they're more famous than me. But I'm the world's richest geezer, there's no one richer than me. Finally, I'd like to showcase some of Rome's richest, or Romillionaires as I call them. Three men immediately stand out as not only the richest Romans, but some of the richest people in human history. Firstly, the richest athlete of all time, the champion of charioteers, it's Gaius Apollius Diocles. Born in 104 CE, Diocles would go on to win 1,462 chariot races, amassing a total fortune of 35 million sesterces. That's enough to feed the entire city of Rome for a year. It's also worth repeating, Diocles was the richest athlete of all time. Next, the crooked, firefighting, Parthian dying senator bribing triumvir himself, Marcus Licinius Crassus, with an estimated net worth of 200 million sesterces. Those in the audience familiar with classical history should have seen this one coming. Crassus made his immense fortune in a firefighting racket. A house would catch on fire, and Crassus would send his army of slaves to put it out, for a small price. That price being, surrender sole ownership of the house to Crassus, or be left with a smoldering pile of ash. You might be thinking, how common was it for a fire to just randomly start? Well, considering that the Romans lacked modern-day air conditioning, stoves, and electric lighting, a Roman family basically always had a fire going. Also, when you have an army of slaves at your disposal, fires suspiciously tend to start more often. And finally, the richest Roman of all time, with an estimated net worth of $4.6 trillion, it's none other than Caesar Augustus. And that's because about a fifth of Rome's entire economy went into Augustus's pocket. I should mention that, at this point, Rome accounts for about a quarter of the total GDP in the world. Remember how I said Diocles could feed Rome for a year? Well, Augustus actually did that. Every year. Not to mention funding other infrastructure and public projects. And there you have it. A very brief summary of the many intricacies of finances and money in the Roman Empire. And if you'd like to learn more, or just talk with other people about the subject of Roman coins, I'll leave a link in the description to the Coin Talk form, a website that helped out greatly in the research for this video. And with that being said, see you all next time.